lawyer. I'm a lawyer here in Montgomery and up in my home county of Chambers. I represent Chambers and Lee County, a house for five terms. We had the good sense to stop after that and then went to DHR as commission under two very different governors. So the purpose of that parable is you have to work both sides of the street. As we've talked about today, we, we will be working over these next few years together of the legislative side of the street at the state house, and then the, on the capital side of the street with the executive branch with the governor and her finance director. I think that most of your focus so far has been on the legislative side, and we've spoken to a little bit about that, about the new membership that's come and the structure of the four budget committees. When I was in the House, I had both budgets in one committee. That was quite a while ago, but now it's been chopped up into two House committees, Ways and Means Education, Ways and Means General Fund, and Ways and Means uh, Finance and Taxation in the Senate General Fund and the f &T Education in the Senate. And I, I'm assuming many things. One is that all of you have had a very productive week. I don't want to recover anything you've already talked about. And I'm also assuming that you've dug pretty deeply into the legislative website, which is extremely inform informative. There's a number of links, lots of ways to get to know the members uh, a little bit better to identify those you know that you don't know, those that are close to home, which is where the real work is. As we talked before, we need to get this work done back in the districts not at the State House, because you come to the State House and face a tidal wave of 512 lobbyists, you know, again, all of which are fine people, but then they compete with you for time and attention and focus with the legislators, particular budget committee members. And we'll talk about that as much as you want to, but the reality is that I encourage you, I exhort you, to do your advocacy work back in your districts, to identify those that can help you, those that you're not sure will help you, and build some relationships for the long term. Now, we, have, I'm encouraged that we are here at the beginning of a new four-year term. You have a, a seasoned governor and seasoned lieutenant governor. The leadership in both chambers are fairly veterans, but you do have a new, extraordinary situation, truly extraordinary, and I hope you know that growth in both the education budgets and the general fund over last year when the bud current budget was adopted has just been astronomical. The education budget that we're all vitally interested in has really been in the spotlight, as you know, because what was passed last year was a record $8.3 billion education budget. But now five months later, when the legislature comes back to begin work on the 24 budget, what do we find? An explosion in sales and income taxes. So there is now $2.7 billion excess or new money uh, in the current year's education budget, which can be appropriated in a supplemental appropriation for the current year in the current session. So that's part of what our struggle will be for, and also a way that you can approach some of the budget members, that it, the money has never been this good. This is, I'm not suggesting to you this is a Santa Claus season. It's not. But there are ways that... The general fund on the other side uh, was passed for the current fiscal year at $2.7 billion, which is, as you know, Medicaid and all the non-education function. But it's also experienced a $300 million growth in revenues so that you have a $3 billion general fund with money to spend in the current session even before the legislature and the government get to the new budget for 24, which they will adopt during this session to take effect in October. Um, a point I, I meant to make in the early 
portion where we're talking down that we're because we were segueing into budgets and then back to some communication area. I think you know that the both budgets, both supplemental in the current year and for the new year, originate with the governor. She and her finance director's team prepare and submit budget acts that expend the revenue use that come into those two trust funds, send that over to the legislature, and traditionally, the governor's bills, budget bills, are sponsored as a courtesy, really, by the chairs of the four budget committees. But it's a long way from done then, as you know, because the legislature will work on it, will work around the budget bills in committees. Um, for two or three months. I mean, this current session will now last into June, June the 19th. So it'll be that long time before we see the bottom line on a lot of things. But do, do you understand this? You, and I think you do, that you start with the executive budget, which is extremely important. Uh, we made some suggestions, We're not lobbyists, but the groups that we work with are pretty bold. And we made some suggestions on the supplemental bill and on the new budget. And it remains to be seen whether that will be in the governor's budget or not, but it can be changed throughout the legislative process. It's not a very pretty picture, but it's worth repeating that the two things you should not see made, one is budgets and the other is sausage. <laughs> A lot of personalities, a lot of issues go into the budget bills, but we're on the high road with disabilities issues because there is considerable money uh, for potentially considerable money for mental health, for Medicaid, uh, potentially for rehab services, which is another total subject for another day. But it's a good year, and we also will be, sure, can be a good year. People will just do right, amen? <laughs> do right. And now we have this extra new, amazing $2 billion in ARPA money, the American Rescue Act federal funds have come into the state. And the legislature this past session appropriated half of that money, the first billion, so primarily to broadband and water and sewer and some other infrastructure issues. Now, the second billion is in the bank and the bill is in, and as you, I think you know, because we'll ask you in a minute, and in the governor's state of the state address Tuesday night, she announced a special session to begin immediately after day one of the regular session. So it's embedded, the special session is embedded in the regular session. The regular session calendar stops while the ARPA special session proceeds, which we believe will be possibly a week, of four or five meeting days and two or three committee days, just on the ARPA bill. Then the regular session will resume, and there will be, in addition to the 2024 budget bills, there will be probably a thousand house bills and somewhere around 450, 500 Senate bills. There will be a crowded season, which all the more goes back to the point that we started with, that the from your standpoint, our standpoint, that the three Ps are the key, preparation, Preparation, preparation. Precisely, know precisely what you're asking for. Know precisely who you're talking, communicating with. And precisely evaluate after the fact the impact of your work. That's a nutshell of where we've been so far. Um, we can continue this huge conversation, but that's not absolutely necessary. What I think, I hope will be helpful, and I'm not, again, I'm not going to put 
anybody on the spot. I, you know, let me go back to the folks that are just coming in. I asked the others to tell me your name and where you vote. Anybody that's coming, just, just so that I'm acquainted with my um, pastor. Yeah. Tell me, you, I, know, I know some of you. Tell me. I know Nancy Anderson has come in, but you know, she's, of course you are. Where do you vote? It's okay, just holler out. I'm, it's a I vote in Shelby County and um, challenging district. Okay. My district is, I have to look it up on my phone, um, three. Yeah, okay. I have my district. And you want to? Kyle McGee, we're kind of looking for his little introduction button, but this is Kyle. Okay. And Kyle votes in Shelby County too. He's a registered voter in Shelby County. Hi, I'm Nikki. Hi, Nikki. And I also vote in Shelby County. I see. Well, that's no disrespect, but a challenging district. Hey, I'm Holly Cawthorn. I vote in Elmore County. We have a new. House member, Mr. Stubbs, who is on the House Ways and Means Committee. Very impressive start, a freshman member. So I want you to be buds with him. If that's a, is, that a, is that okay? I, I, you may already be. You know, people tell me all the time, well, I go to Sunday school with him or something. You know, so anyway, El, Elmore is positioned with a freshman budget committee member to really shine. So shine on. Nancy. Hey, I'm Nancy Anderson, you and are? I vote in Tuscaloosa County. Ah, oh, yes. Just a, one of many side word, road, my words on Tuscaloosa County, as Nancy and James know. You have a very strong new woman freshman member over there, uh, Cynthia Allman, who has landed on House Ways and Means Education and Rules, formidable, a very, very formidable and, and brilliant woman, as best I can, person, as best I can tell. So Tuscaloosa, of course, you know, Tuscaloosa is the home of your brilliant state finance director, Bill Poo, but don't, I don't have to get, take too much time on that, but you follow, follow the name Bill Poo over these next two couple of years and you'll know why. So, nevertheless, Tuscaloosa is a stronghold of potential budget leadership, not necessarily on our issues, but I'm happy to tell you, if you don't know, that Cynthia Allman is a sponsor of the new supported decision-making bill, um, which starts shortly. So, we're real proud of her. The sponsor on the Senate side is the great Arthur Orr, who happens to be the chairman of the Education Finance and taxation. So we're off to a very good start on that, on the bill passing side of the process. But again, the, the budget process is our lifeblood, and, and that's um, what we will focus on now. I invited the Speaker of the House, to, I didn't really, shouldn't say that, but spiritually, I invited the Speaker of the House to come and, <laughs> and be with and be with you today, but he just said, "Full, I just uh, can't get way down there from Fort Payne today." Um, Representative Nathaniel Ledbetter is the brand new Speaker of the House, and I don't think I've tell you it has nothing to do necessarily with Speaker Ledbetter himself, but the role of the Speaker of the House is enormously powerful. I mean, not only did you preside over the House, as the pro tem does in the Senate, but you also appoint the committee members. 
and you decide through your rules committee chairs what the big what the business of the day is and uh, i've had the great pleasure over my long time of serving with a lot of different speakers of the house a lot of a lot of different governors in fact Kay is my ninth <laughs> governor but um a lot of different finance directors, but Speaker Ledbetter is already very early, very down to earth, very accessible, nice, faith based person, as we talked about a minute or so ago, who um, has retired from the Rural Electric Co op up there in DeKalb County, which tells you a lot about his work ethic and his background. Um, and he owned the local newspaper. For a while, which is an interesting. This is the sort of thing we talked about earlier about the DNA. You know who you're talking to, where they're coming from, what they think about, what they care about. But the Speaker of the House is, I've described him publicly and to him as an extraordinary, ordinary guy. I mean, he's, he's been a working man, a newspaper owner, obviously very popular among the House. He was elected unanimously as Speaker. But he has a huge responsibility. I won't take the time to necessarily describe the Senate leadership unless you want to later on. But but uh, Speaker Nathaniel Ledbetter is in uh, briefly in the office this morning. If anybody would like to uh, take a few minutes with the Speaker, we'd be glad to see you. Who'd like to make an appointment? Anybody? All right, Ms. McGee. Anybody else? Who else? Speakers here. In effect, you will. I'm. 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 He's, I'm just a secretary. Others. Oh. Okay. Good. Two. Great. Well, the speaker keep him busy. I don't know. The speaker really carved, carved out thirty minutes to spend with. There we go. Okay. Three. Gotta get four. You know, he's a, he's a very four oh, mobile. Well, okay, momentum. First one that raised her hand. Veronica. Oh. <laughs> All right. Well I saw Angela. We're not I'm not <clears throat> yeah, this is this is we'll let Veronica. Yeah. We'll let Veronica go first because she, she um of course that, you are. Of course you. Are. Oh, that's right. Well, so, for, uh, former Pepper graduate from last year, Veronica McGee. She's going to speak in a little while, and she practiced a lot last year. Yes, that's just great. Kyle is on the agenda for. A well, week. I am. I am Nathaniel Lead Barrett. I'm the Speaker of the Alabama House, and I'm mighty glad to see you. Well, we're going to sit down. Please come in. Here. Sit down. She's in the middle of here. Yes. Very nice to meet you. I'm so glad to see you. Great. Great. Glad you carved out this time for me today. Yeah, it'd be fine. One line. Okay. So I'm, I'm prepared and getting a few little notes for myself. Um, so I'm interested in today regarding the um, ARPA, tell ARPA me about funding. Your family. Oh, tell me, tell me about my family. No, I don't know. I'm going to tell you. Okay. This is a normal reaction. This is what politicians do. They want to know all about Absolutely. you. Well, they don't assume anything. They want to learn. I just celebrated my 60th birthday. Yes, well, so as you know, very, very it. proud of that. I'm still still around. But I live in Shelby County. And um, my family and I and lived there since 1996. I have three boys. I'm married to my husband, Steve. And we are very, very active in our community. And let's see, I'm originally from South Dakota. Grew up in a little small rural town. And we had a wonderful little paper in our town called The Winter Advocate. And I understand that you used to be beautiful. an editor of a local this. newspaper. Beautiful. Absolutely. So when I read that about you, and I read a little bit about your paper and the paper that you um, were so, oh, we it's just we so own. interesting. I just remember one of my fondest memories of having my picture in the paper in our little town of 3000. So I'm a big believer in print, and we should keep our local newspapers going. Really? 
<laughs> that being said, there's a few other things I think we need to get going. Yes. And um, I'd like to talk to you about a little sure, bit of them today. Well, our son, Kyle, is 23, and he has a lot of additional needs. He's a power chair user and um, has been um, very active in his community. But as parents, we um, are really concerned about where Kyle's going to live in the future. And will he have a choice where he gets to live? Um, Kyle has some very specific ideas of where he wants to live, which is in an inclusive community that's affordable and accessible. And when we started researching this in our state, we found out there's not very many places like this for Kyle to live in that are integrated and accessible to his community and walkable and, and good transportation and access to movies and grocery stores. And that's the kind of place that community that Kyle would like to live in. He doesn't want to live at home with his parents in Brook Island the rest of his life. So that being said, um, I love my mama, but I don't live with her. Either. Yeah, so. exactly. So we started working on some advocacy a few years ago and, and we have gotten um, some really good partners and stakeholders that are very interested in building a community like this. But one of the barriers is um, is related to affordable housing and how our lack of support for affordable housing in the way of LIHTC funding, um, different specific things, uh, income averaging that we don't have for affordable housing in our state is not available. So that makes it harder for developers to build good affordable housing. So I think some of our ARPA funds could help us with that. So well, you're absolutely on target on that. Let me just uh, encourage you. I don't okay. interrupt you because I'm, I'm with you on that. But uh -huh. I do I do think the the, uh, the ARPA appropriation appropriation process is is actually ideal for you to to. I want, just want to ask you if you'd have an opportunity to uh, visit with any of that. ARPA Oversight Committee or the sponsor the bill, if you haven't, I would encourage you to do that because there will be um, a lot of flex some flexibility in the, there's a portion of the money that could be adapted to this sort of work. Who would, uh, have you thought much about which agency you might channel yes, we the have. money through? Yes, mm -hmm. we um We actually, uh, the Department of Mental Health and our commissioner sure. um, uh, just adopted our recommendations for um I've seen the, that you've seen I've that seen so that. we we asked for 20 million yeah. and um DMH is getting a total of 25 million so we probably will not get our 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 20 million we're asking for but we're hoping that we have some very specific um um ideas for the use of that money so we are now drafting another letter to the commissioner regarding that 25 million we want to stay a little bit ahead of the of some of the group home providers and 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 how we want to have access to that money other than it going straight to our our agency providers and say you know we need to utilize this money and looking at some things for more inclusive housing so we have a letter that's being co-sponsored by numerous people that we're going to um hopefully get in front of the um the commissioner and you know give them a different option of how they should spend their money on housing let's not not let all of our our department of mental health money go to to group home providers. We we need some other options. We need affordable, accessible, inclusive housing. I appreciate. I really appreciate you sharing that with me. You know, I was uh, I'm very close to the mental health department. I sponsored the crisis center bill, and it's been really uh, something that's very close to my heart. And I'll uh, certainly be in in constant communication with the commissioner. And I'll, I'll we'll see where housing can possibly pop up in that. Thank Absolutely. you for coming all the way. So All the way down here today. Great Thank to see you. you. I'd love to uh, have a chance to meet my son one of these days. That's right. We'll do that. You be sure and meet, meet my chief of staff, Mark Tuggle, on your way out. Mark, uh, got it. Yeah, the senior staff in all these offices are very important in, in terms of what flows into the big chiefs. He your housing disability? No, he is. He's the he chief of staff. Chief he's of staff. chief of staff. Okay, Mark. And, and Mark got Tuggle. It. And he will uh, keep my list of to do is pretty high, oh, pretty high. Okay. Thank you again. Thank you for coming, Mr. Speaker.
Enjoy that. And if they want to be, you know, your buds, and they'll tell you that. Please come in, ma'am. I'm Nathaniel Ledbetter from DeKalb County. Angela Richards. How you do? I'm doing fine. Good. I sure do like being Speaker of the House. I appreciate you. <laughs> I appreciate you coming to see me. Well, you know, nice to how many folks in line out there today? About four, five, about yeah. four, five hundred every day. Please sit down. Okay. Guess them. What is your name again? Angela. I'm yes, on, I'm Angela Richardson. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Where you live, Angela? I actually live in Jefferson County. Uh, and how's your mama? She's fine. She <laughs> also lives in Jefferson County. Yeah, that's great. That's but we're originally from uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. My goodness, you took Cajun folks. Okay. All right. Well, I appreciate your time. Tell me, how, how can I help you? We got a lot going on down here, but we're glad to see you. Go. Well, I'd like to speak to you today, uh, Mr. Speaker of the House, about. Uh, Education and employment. Uh -huh. uh, there are two issues that are very close to my heart, and I know that you do care about what goes on in the disability community. And the connection to workforce, which is very, Excellent. very, very crucial. Excellent. And I'm glad to hear that. And one of the issues that that is presently affecting my family, and I know since it affects mine, is affecting hundreds of other families across the state of Alabama. Uh, I actually homeschool my children. Uh, and so since I homeschool the last two, I actually have three. I have three children. They're 22, 16, and 14, and I've been married to my husband for 29 years. Um, and when we discovered our son um, was neurodivergent, because that's the word he prefers to use, um, when we discovered that he was neurodivergent, it was there were struggles. However, right now the struggle is securing transitional services for him because he's homeschooled, and naturally we have to uh, secure the approval of his local educational agency, which is in this case, Birmingham City Schools District. Goodness. And of course <laughs> they have denied our request, but even in that, uh, what I've since discovered is that what I wanted to do is get him involved in construction to offer him competitive pay because just like the previous uh, individual you spoke with, he does not want to live at home. Even at 14 and 15, he was saying, I'm not going to live in your basement. I'm going to move out and get my own place. Bulldozer. <laughs> exactly. So um, we want him to be, and he wants to explore his opportunities. And so he wants to explore construction. Tell me his name again. Ashton. Ashton. All yes. Right. And um, since he wants to explore that, and we were denied the opportunity for him to even competitively compete for an opportunity at, a, at an academy, by his LEA, then my question to you is how can we, as a state, allow that when, as a state, we do allow the incarcerated access to the trades? And so since the state allows incarcerated people access to educational opportunities in the trades, why wouldn't the state allow that to homeschool and private school students? That's a, that's a very fine question and one that nobody else has asked me. You know, I thought I was real smart, but I, you know, but I did not have that one before. And I want to tell you exactly where you need to start this. Right there in Jefferson County, out in Trustful, you have Representative Danny Garrett, who is the chairman of the Education Ways and Means Committee. He is a business executive, for, you know, for in, uh, is and semi-retired now, but has helped build companies and is extremely active in the workforce transition issues. So if you want me to, we'll, we'll make you an appointment with, with Chairman Garrett. Um, you'll have four or 5,000 folks lined up to see him, but you really need to do this pretty soon. So I've asked him to serve as, a, as the Ways and Means Education Chairman. Because workforce issues, for a number of reasons, given his business background, but a number of issues, including workforce, are very high on his to-do list. And frankly, Sister Angela, I will tell you, there is it's hard to say no to the chairman of the budget committees. And so you need to, and I'm sure he will, even though he lives in Trustful, they have their own school system and their own questions of leadership at the Jefferson at the Je Birmingham school system understand the respect and the knowledge of the budget chairman 
And so it's a good thing you can tell anybody up there that you talked to me about that and that I understand all that, and your next step is to talk directly to the budget chair who could make things happen. It's remarkable sometimes, surprising. Now, I'm not, I'm, well, I, want, I want you to follow up with me about that. Get me posted. I want you to meet Mark Tuggle. That's my, sec, my chief of staff. His office is right out here. And uh, you keep Mark posted. Just, just remind him that what we talked about today, very briefly, we have to do today. You can email him if you want to, but he keeps my to-do list. And let me know how it goes with Chairman Garrett, and then we'll look at something next steps. Okay. I appreciate you very much. What a, what a beautiful family. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Mrs. Speaker of the House. That's all right. Pleasure to meet Say you. Thank you. you for your time. You're so welcome. Very welcome. Oh, McAllen is crowded, I hope. I hope she is lonesome up here. Mm. I, I hear you. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. I hear you. Uh, you're you're real good with remembering people and names and mm -hmm. positions and so forth. You yeah. weren't just telling her that. It's it's actually Danny Garrett. Is Danny he? Garrett. Yes. Okay. He's from me. I already wrote it down because oh, you you'll enjoy knowing him. He's. I'm taking a side. I'm not speaking as a speaker now. I won't tell you this. Danny Garrett is a business executive who suddenly, and he was very, very close to Bill Poole. He was the vice chairman of the committee before Poole became finance director for the governor. So now he's taking it over, and he build, brings a very corporate approach to the education budget. He, he, he seems to be only interested, not only, primarily interested in investments in schools and education that directly feed into the workforce business community. That's not that's, that's not a bad thing. It's just I'm just telling you that's his perspective. Yeah, he the, we, <laughs> tell them with, with some people we say we live in Trustville because we we have we have privy to the, the Trustville Community Center and stuff just because of where we live. But the our side of the street sort of or that little area. For some, it's zoned for, for Birmingham City, but just right across the street, because I grew up where I, pe people right, just, just across the street went to Trustville, and I went to Huffman. So. <laughs> <laughs> what are you trying to <laughs> <laughs> Socially conscious, maybe. Then there's, there's no reflection on Chairman Garrett because I, I appointed him. You know, speak I appointed him, but he is um, he takes a businessman approach to it. He is he is um, he's on the Innovation Commission, which is a good thing, uh, as along with Bill Poo and others. So Garrett has great potential, but you go, he's going to require. A little more work, maybe, than Chairman Hall will in the House. Now, that's that's back on nitty gritty land. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to digress too much. The Speaker's now back in office, and he's not going to give any more personal opinions on the um, personalities of my members. But but Miss Angela, you're going to let me know now what Chairman Garrett says exactly. And remember, I think you will decide exactly what you want him to do. Precisely what you want him to do. What is his advice to get it done? Hey, sir. How you doing? Good. You bring me some seafood. I would like to. I would like to have done that. Because mm, you could have been, you know, I would never have shaken you down for money because I am the speaker. But, you know, Lola Gumbo would be good right now. Sit down. Sit down. That way we're so happy to see you. Tell me your name again. I can't find it on your shirt. Oh, I'm sorry. My name is Niles Valentine. Niles I'm from Valentine. Mobile County. Yes, I hope. and you're gonna meet with it. I hear you got meeting with my delegation, with my house delegation from Mobile coming up. Is that right? That's correct, sir. All right, now you know how to work it. What's up? Uh, 
So I'm here to discuss with you um, Senate Bill 100, House Bill 263, and House, and House Bill 522. All three of those bills, I believe, are in one sentence. They feed into each other and they work very well with each other. What are they? So, Give me about those House bills. I know a lot of them. You know, but I don't know the two particular ones. Which one's those? So 263 would be Exton's Law. Okay. Who's, who's the sponsor of that? The sponsor is, I'll have to get back with you because there, there are quite a few. Fun- oh, Debbie Wood from Valley. She, that's a good area over there. She, Valley. She's not the only sponsor. There, There is actually a long list of sponsors well, for both bills. That's actually. a great thing. She's a member of the Budget Committee. She's a smart, smart person. Go yeah, ahead. I like to have a look. I would like to have had the list in front of me so that I could yeah. actually read them all off I'm to you. Saying, well, I can get and, that. Um, I and, am the speaker after all. <laughs> House Bill 522. Mm. It's um Colby's is the Colby Act. Oh yes, that has. Yeah, um, I hear. I yeah. hear that. Oh yes, there's quite a few sponsors. Once again, I wish I had. I wish I had brought the list of, of um sponsors with okay. me. I only have five minutes. I know yeah, that we're much. Sorry, we'll take, we'll take. I don't know what I can do. What you want me to do? Okay, so just a little bit about me because um, this is going to explain why it is that I that I'm advocating so Good. hard for these three bills here. Okay. So my name is Niles Valentine, as I told you. I am a certified full stack developer, a certified robotic process automate automator, a published author, and I'm currently working on Blender Animate to animate my first YouTube series. So I, you should also know that. I was diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder at age 13. So those three bills in question is to help people just like me realize our full potential and not be discriminated against in in institutions when we're trying to meet our needs so that we can flourish, so that we can become independent, so that we can pay taxes to to, um, essentially put it back into Medicaid for people who truly, truly needed more, more than we would after we paid services. Astounding fellow. I appreciate you sharing that. That's your legislature is now looking at your life. They're looking right into your life. So, yes. And I, I bring that up because I believe that I am living proof of why those three bills would need to be passed, why we should um, ensure that those bills come into law, because the Better Care, Better Jobs Act, which is which is Senate Bill 100, it would help or it would through Medicaid, it would help these um the um direct care providers yes, meet the meet um people with special meet people's needs a little bit better than they are they are currently being met because simply put, those professionals are not paid what they're supposed to be paid. And let's be real, m- more money, more care, more concern about how you're doing your job. You're absolutely right. Well, I'm um I'm not seeing enough mobile names mobile bills. Um, you know, I mean, my job is you can can take care of that. You know, pick them, pick your co-sponsors up. But those are those are bills that I think I can safely say. You know, tell my rules, chairman, what to do every day. But you're gonna see those pretty soon. So preparation um, is is important. If you're at, not only at your local level, but you've got some very very strong sponsors. Of all three of those, and I also have there. There are numerous sponsors as well. I told you, I, yes. there was a list of sponsors oh, yes. that I had. I couldn't. Oh, yes. I don't have them all in front of me, so I, no, I guarantee I'm going to forget one of them. Well, no, you don't need to forget them. We're going to talk about that in the caucus, the Republican caucus. It's every Wednesday for lunch. Democratic caucus. It's every Wednesday for lunch. Some of these lobbyists have to go out there and pick that ticket up. But nevertheless, we decide sort of informally what we each and all care about. And um, it's not very necessarily efficient, but it's really up to my rules, chairman, to make a calendar. But what we've talked about in the caucus lunch, maybe we could do, really, really adds a lot of momentum. So it does. thinking about asking your mobile friends to hop up in a couple of caucus lunches, put a little fuel on this fire. God bless you, brother. Thank you for coming. That's mighty fine. Thank you so much. I'll be in touch now. You will follow up.
uh, that I plan to, especially to have more time because I understand I only have five minutes with you. Well, you can, you know, we're not, I'm not, I'm not rushing you. I just have to get a sense of what y'all got, what you got going on. You got connected to that strong. I am. Scared of them, they're so small. You know, it's like you know, man, we just we try hard. I know you do, and you know, you, well, I know now. You know, I'm a country boy, but I know that if you know we don't do right, you go somebody's gonna sue us. So, <laughs> we we don't have to get to that. Let's have a good session. Bless your heart. Thank you again. I'll see you again. Didn't he do a fine job? He did a fine job. Academy Award time. Right. Look at the camera and say that. <laughs> Anybody else? Please do. Hope oh, somebody just came. He's gonna. Come. He's gonna be up here a little bit. Oh, is he okay? All right, good. Well, I didn't mean to over the gentleman in the be, cap. Be over. I didn't mean to be overbearing. Been... So earlier we were just saying, say state your name and then we're county your. Oh, uh, my name is Melvin Watts. I'm a HIPAA graduate from last year. Yes, sir. And I'm here for Montgomery. Montgomery, we well, have got some new members in Montgomery. Um, look into that. Well, I hope out of those three very bold conversations, we were able to sort of reinforce what we've talked about today, which is know who you're talking to, what you're talking about, and what you're going to do about it. Okay? Is that reasonably fair? Any questions before I wrap up and ask you some of the Big questions of the day. Any other strategic matters, Sister Veronica? Is that a wave or what was that? Oh, okay. Yes, sir, Brother Valentine. Yeah, let me let me make a very strong suggestion that I haven't yet. And then we'll use this example. One of our more active sustaining members of our coalition is United Cerebral Palsy of Alabama. And some of our associate directors have a meeting this next week with Commissioner Boswell at Mental Health. And then following that with some selected members of the legislature, but my strong recommendation is what we're doing is that we are giving the commissioner an advance one-page memo about what it is that we want to talk about when we see her. And then I ask her assistant. We were getting that to her Monday night in preparation for a Thursday uh, meeting. And this is the same approach you will take with and probably with your delegation, I hope, that you will, I love that old preacher formula, where tell them what you're going to tell them, and then tell them, and then tell them what you told them, you know, and that's your formula there. So a little advanced preparation for them can be extremely useful. And then that would be the case with the speaker staff or with any other that and realistically flooded with stuff. It's always good to give a heads up, to say, for example, we've already told the commissioners it's a, a very important meeting that she will have the information that she needs, very concise, three days ahead of time. Uh, so it's part of the homework that it takes. I used the word relentless before, and you just said you have to be relentless. So everybody in this PIPA group realizes that you take on a lot of responsibility. At the same time, you have great opportunities. So take the responsibility to do the work. To do the work. Thanks. That's ever. Other follow up. Okay, good. It's about time to wrap it on up. Right. Here's, here's door prize number one. Here, door prize number one. Who oh, may not have enough? Who listened to the governor's state of the state Tuesday night? But right. 
You did who else? Current current Pippa. Anybody? Anybody? Anybody yeah. listen to the state of the state? Oh, you did? Oh, good. Well, that's you're almost there. <laughs> you know, the who can say before we answer this question, I'm the governor's state of the state is the blue or what her administration will try to track through the session it does not mean that the legislature will mind her, but it is the blueprint. Um, anybody read it? It was reproduced in every newspaper and every media outlet in the state. <laughs> lawyer, lawyer, don't. I did have the opportunity to go to the state of the state with Mr. Fuller several times, and that yeah. was amazing. Yeah, we had a amazing time. well different, opportunity. Di different governors, different times. That's another story for another day. Some governors are more interesting than others. <laughs> Believe me, that you're right. Um, okay, if you have not found it, it's on the governor's website, which I gave you, governor.alabama.gov. Read the blueprint if you didn't see it. And it's okay if you didn't because, you know, Tuesday night at 6 o'clock is everybody's public. <laughs> I'm not necessarily watching the governor, but you go win anyway, at least the first prize. But do you remember what she said was going to be her top priority for the session? I'm not putting you in the spot. You just might have. Well, Kate can be pretty inspired. She's like me, she runs out of breath sometimes. Yes. Yes. Um, uh, no, I don't. Okay. Education, education is her legacy. And to the extent to which we connect our goals to quality education and workforce building, the better off we will be. So the governor's really set the tone on that. And, and that's consistent with the legislative leadership, too. But the connection between disability funding, disability rights and issues, and careers and economic development is what's on the leadership's mind. It's just frankly what it is like. So this is this is the education governor. Uh, there were some people up on that podium behind her that uh, some agreed with and some didn't, but. But most of them that I want to have a future in this state agree with Kay on this. On Governor Ivy, I shouldn't have known 50 years. I shouldn't call it Kay. Thank you. That's very good. And you win. You'll be thrilled. And it comes with a requirement that you share this with everybody. This is old fashioned stick peppermint, soft stick peppermint. I understand. I understand. Well, you all seem. You all see mighty sweet. <laughs> and there's enough in there. I think everybody can have two. But if you want, even, I have some more at home. I bought, I bought them up at Christmas and frankly, I'm giving you the leftovers. But, they, but, but they, they're, they're, individu they're individually wrapped. Well, you, you're accustomed to that. That's how the legislative budget process works. You wind up with, you know, you have to warm over the leftovers. In, 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 Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy that. The King Leo peppermint have been around for 150 years. And so, you know, you just have at it. Well, and on the more serious note, what are the three Ps? Oh, my goodness, I don't have enough copies. Somebody, here's the, here is the Judas Newman biography. Uh, I guess I'll have to leave it with Linda and she'll have to draw dames or something a little later on, but this is going to be the grand prize, which of course, yeah, I know that you've heard a lot about her. Last challenge to you is something that we agreed early on. And as you, you do whatever you need to do, because I can't, that, I didn't have enough to give all these good shout outs, but I'm glad to know preparation, 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 and precision. And I think that you are Fairly well prepared. Thank you for your patience with me today. I'm a huge fan of this work. I'm a disciple of some of you in the room, <laughs> frankly, and look forward to that. And like Judy Herman, we all want to go out from this place prepared to be a real badass. Thank you all very much. Thank you.
Veronica, show your shirt. 